I recently acquired a bunch of PS2 and AT keyboards. Um, they're mostly IBM, but there are quite a few different other brands in there as well that I picked up just because they have tactile switches or uh, they look unique and have other features that wouldn't normally be found on common PS2 keyboards. Um, there's definitely some Model M's, some Model F's, uh, and just a lot of other different keyboards in there as well. But with all these keyboards, I needed a way to test them, so I created a Arduino Nano based box that actually displays whatever keys I'm pressing on a 16 by 2 backlit LCD screen that I picked up at Radio Shack about seven or eight years ago before they closed. The keyboard tester is made up of about seven parts. You've got the Arduino Nano, the custom breakout board, which is a PCB that I designed, and it just breaks out the Arduino Nano into pins, so it's easier to connect everything. Then there's the Parallax 16x2 backlit LCD. That's the one that I got at Radio Shack several years ago. Uh, the LiPo charger and 5 volt booster. That's an Adafruit product that I just happened to have from another project and I never used it. I'm actually not even sure if they still sell them, but I think they sell something similar. Then I've got the USB breakout board that just breaks out the USB signals and then you can convert that to USB micro. Finally, you've got the 3.7 volt 500 milliamp lipo battery which is kind of out of the shot there but um that just connects into the lipo charger uh and five volt booster and um it, the booster takes the 3.7 volt signal and converts it to five volts oh and i can't forget the toggle switch which plugs into the lipo charger and just turns the unit on and off but midwest cyberpunk why can't you just get a usb to ps2 adapter and use a program you can test your keyboards with well, the keyboards aren't at my house. They're actually at a remote location. So I needed to build something portable that I could take with me that was battery powered uh, so I could test the keyboards on location. And, you know, it was also a lot of fun to build. Now that you've got a pretty good idea of the different parts of the PS2 keyboard tester. We'll take a look at the building process and how I put everything together. I managed to capture most of the footage, but there are definitely a few parts that got left out because I forgot to turn my camera on. The breakout board starts with a bare copper clad PCB board, and then you take a laser printer and print on a glossy piece of laser paper. From there, you iron that on with a clothing iron to the board and this is the end result it just leaves the toner on the board and that will resist the chemicals in the next part of the video which is the chemical etching process as you can see the transfer didn't go on a hundred percent and that's pretty common so sometimes you have to take a sharpie and go over the traces like I did here um, and that that acts the same as the toner does Here's my PCB etching station. It's just a table I have outside, but I'm using muriatic acid and hydrogen peroxide in a plastic container um, with sort of a hydroponic or fish tank air pump and um, a tube that's got holes in it. And that helps to provide oxygen and agitate the muriatic acid and hydrogen peroxide mixture. This mixture is definitely the most effective mixture I've found, um, and it's super cheap too. I got muriatic acid, a one gallon container, I think is around 10 or $11, and then the hydrogen peroxide's only $1, $2, something like that for a, a bottle that will last you for multiple PCBs easily. It, you mix it in a one to two ratio, so one part muriatic acid to two parts hydrogen peroxide. Here I forgot to bring my Sharpie out to mark the levels on the hydrogen peroxide and muriatic acid, so I'm going to go back inside and 
get a sharpie to mark it and it's good to do that if you don't have a measuring cup or something that lets you know how much liquids in the container The nice thing about this method is that it doesn't take long at all. I would say easily less than 10 minutes for the whole process. And um, as soon as you start seeing the, the water turn blue, that's definitely the copper reacting to the hydrogen peroxide and muriatic acid mixture. And that means that the copper's coming off and your PCB's being etched. You definitely want to be wearing gloves during this process, um, and ideally you would wear eye protection, which I failed to do here. But once you get the uh, board completely etched, you can pretty well tell uh, when you look at it because all the copper will be gone and all that's left are the traces. So when you pull it out, I'd recommend using a stick or something so you don't get your fingers in the mixture as that could easily irritate your skin if you don't wash it off quickly enough. This is actually one of the parts that I didn't record, but all I'm doing here is taking some acetone and rubbing it on the traces of the board so the toner comes off and you're left with a PCB that is ready to be drilled. This is just a homemade drill press that I made for my Dremel. I took a drill press that was meant for a drill, like a hand drill, and um, I modified it a little bit and added some mounting hardware for my Dremel. Um, as you'll see here in a little bit, it also doubles as a heat set insert tool press. The Dremel comes out and then I can put the heat set tool in there also. I think the micro drill bit I'm using here is maybe a 0.8 millimeter, somewhere around there. It's definitely less than one millimeter, and it's perfect for the little PCB holes that I'm drilling out here for the through-hole components. Here I'm soldering the female header sockets to accept the Arduino um, and then also the male header sockets to plug into the PS2 port, the LCD and the power also. One little trick here is to use painter's tape, masking tape 
to tape the headers to the board so they stay in place when you're soldering them. I designed the case in Fusion 360 and it turned out really well except for the LCD mounts which are a little bit too big so I kind of had to shave those down and post and uh, I actually ended up just hot gluing the LCD to the case but as one rare time where I would actually do that because I usually use screws but it, it ended up being fine for what it is and if it's not I can always just insert screws from the top and then do sort of a manual countersink. This bottom case cover, it's got the four holes on the outside, and that's just for screws to connect to the case. But then on the inside, it's going to have heat set inserts, and that's going to be for the Arduino Nano, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Here's my heat set insert tool, which is really just a soldering iron inside that drill press stand that I used with the Dremel. The Dremel just pops right out and I can put my soldering iron in there. The tips I bought were on Amazon and they had a, several of them actually, but the ones I'm using are one of the smallest ones in the set. It came with uh, three, I believe. I actually ended up having to modify the tips on my lathe a little bit. You could also do it on a drill press by sticking it in there and using some sandpaper. It wasn't much that I had to remove, and it's only brass, so it was actually really easy to remove. But that was necessary in order to make it fit inside that Weller soldering iron. The heat set insert process is super satisfying and it's really easy to do once you get a once you get the hang of it, but it does take a little bit of finesse. You really have to make sure you get the heat set inserts in there just right, flush with whatever it is that you're putting them into. And that does take a little bit of moving the object around and also the tool.
I didn't make an assembly video, but this pretty much shows all the parts that are included. Uh, the breakout board just fits onto the heat set inserts on the bottom of the case, and the black and white wires there, they actually tie into the LiPo charging circuit, which then goes to the breakout board. One other part to this project that I didn't mention earlier in the parts list is the PS2 connector, and I just got that from an older computer that I had laying around. Here's a basic operation. You really just plug in the PS2 cable into the unit and turn it on with a switch on the side there. I think my favorite feature about this and why I actually didn't use a computer for it is because hot plugging is super simple and it works every time. I can unplug a keyboard, plug a new one in, and it's good to go. I don't have to reset the unit or turn it on and off or anything. It just works. The Nano in there is using the Arduino PS2 keyboard library, and that pretty much has all the hex codes for most of the keys. Not every single one works, but I can always go back in the library and add or delete more keys as needed based on their hex code. I'm going to link the code, the project files, and everything I used in the project down below. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Don't you dare forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching.